crying right now because I'm angry more than I am, you know, but I got tears in my heart, but I'm just really angry at this person. It's the idea that Nevaeh has suffered that really hurts them. She carried that child down there and throw her in the close of the water and let us suffer and do what they did to her. That child didn't deserve that. That child does not deserve anything. Hey everybody, my name's Tristan, and welcome back to the Mysterious Minds YouTube channel. I was really trying to be happy during this video, but truth be told, there's no way that I could have some happy emotions while talking about this. This case, I haven't been able to stop thinking about it for days. I discovered it while I was doing research and was finishing up the research for another video, but I had to put that video on the back burner because this one is just stuck with me. It's so tragic and, you know, I, it just makes no sense. Um, so since I found out about it, I just haven't been able to stop thinking about it. And there's not a lot of videos made about it, so I wanted to get some information out there. Hopefully we could get some bigger YouTubers to find out about this case. Maybe they can make a video about it. Because we really need to bring justice to this little girl and to her family. So this case, it's about a five-year-old girl named Nevaeh Buchanan. She was born on February 3rd, 2004 in Monroe, Michigan, which is between Detroit and Toledo, Ohio. And she went missing in 2009. But she wouldn't stay missing for very long. About a week later, two fishermen, they would find her body. And the way that she died was um, really tragic. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what we'll be talking about. Here we go. Nevaeh Buchanan was born on February 3rd, 2004 in Monroe, Michigan, which is between Detroit and Toledo, Ohio. In 2009, she was five years old and she had just graduated from preschool and she was about to start kindergarten. Even at the young age of five, she had already started to develop a love for motorcycles. She loved the sound of them, she loved the look of them, and she loved riding around in her power wheels Escalade. And she also loved playing outside with her best friend. She was just a cute, sweet looking girl. And the last time that anybody saw Nevaeh Buchanan Live was on Memorial Day weekend, Sunday, May 24th, 2009, at around 6.30 p.m. She was last seen playing in her U-turn driveway at the Charlotte Arms Apartments in Monroe. Nevaeh's mother, Jennifer, said that the last time that she saw her daughter was when she had came inside, grabbed a popsicle, said that she was going upstairs to a friend's house. Jennifer was having a friend and her young daughter stay, and it wasn't until around 8 p.m. when this friend's daughter came running inside of the apartment, saying, Nevaeh's outside, she's riding her scooter out in the street. So Jennifer, she jumped up, she put on her shoes, and she ran out there to get her daughter. But what she found must have been earth-shattering. It would have been for any mother, I guess for any parent, really. She found Nevaeh's scooter abandoned in the driveway. After a quick search, Jennifer called the police, and a huge hunt was launched for Nevaeh. They had officers, volunteers, canine dogs, helicopters. And two days later, on the 26th, an Amber Alert was finally issued. Naturally, police, they started canvassing the neighborhood and they started questioning everybody in the area. They eventually interviewed over 250 people. And one of these guys was a resident of Monroe. He said that he was leaving the apartment complex at around 7 p.m. And he said that he didn't see any children outside playing, but he saw a little red car speeding out of the parking lot. Family and friends searched woods, backyards, creeks, ditches, and shopping centers. They hung up flyers with her smiling face all over town. The community was doing everything that they could to find this girl and to bring her home. But it would just be two weeks later, on June 5th, 2009, when two fishermen traveling up the River Raisin would make a horrifying discovery. They found the body of missing five-year-old Nevaeh Buchanan, buried in a shallow grave, encased in concrete. We begin with breaking news, a tragic end to the search for Nevaeh Buchanan. The body of the five-year-old girl has been found near the River Raisin. Deputies have spoken to the family, confirming that their little girl is dead. Yeah, two fishermen discovered Nevaeh's body. Two men, a father and a grandfather, small mouth bass fishing around noon today on the banks of the Raisin River here in western Monroe County when they saw a disruption in the dirt. A closer look looked like a large cement block. It smelled, they say, lots of flies. The block apparently had a chip in it as they got closer. We're told the men, quote, freaked out, put one and one together, and called police immediately. Ten hours later, authorities still in and around the scene right now. The young girl may have been dumped, we're told, in a shallow grave on the banks of the Raisin River and covered in something like a quick creek to fast-acting cement. We're about seven miles from the apartment complex where she disappeared.
When police got there, they found that the cement had been mixed incorrectly and it chipped away easily. This incorrect mixing had caused Nevaeh's body to float to the top as it was hardening and showing the clear expression of fear that was on her face. The autopsy revealed that Nevaeh had died from asphyxiation. They found soil in her windpipe that matched the soil from the muddy riverbed that she was found in, meaning that Nevaeh had been buried alive. The soil being in her windpipe and the way that she was found underneath the concrete led investigators to believe that while this poor girl was buried alive, struggling, gasping for air, somebody poured concrete on top of her, leaving her to suffocate alone underground. So who abducted and killed Nevaeh Buchanan? We don't know because this is still an unsolved murder. But police, they had a few suspects early on. On May 25th, just the day after her disappearance, police made their first arrest. The new development, like you mentioned, the name of a second person of interest in this story. Now, we all know about George Kennedy by now. He is the boyfriend of Nevaeh's mother, Jennifer. He is in custody on a parole violation. The new name is Roy Lee Smith, a 48-year-old convicted sex offender. An affidavit says Smith gave a van to Kennedy. Now, inside that van, there are reports that there was a metal tool with blood stains on it those have been sent for testing and we are res waiting results on those tests they arrested two friends of Nevaeh's mom george kennedy and roy lee smith these guys they were definitely not good guys in 1998 george kennedy was charged with statutory rape Nevaeh's mother says that that was just a misunderstanding and that everybody deserves a second chance but she was also possibly romantically involved with this guy and reports show that Nevaeh even called him daddy george and the other guy, Roy Lee Smith, he's just as bad, if not worse. He broke into a family home in 2002 and sexually assaulted a 13-year-old girl. Both of these crimes earned him an undisclosed amount of time in prison. So they're pretty good suspects from the beginning. Search of George Kennedy's motel room in a van that had ties to Roy Lee Smith provided some pretty promising evidence. They found a bloody towel, a sharp-edged tool stained with red, and suggestive pictures of young girls. Unfortunately, the initial promise of this evidence faded away over time because the DNA on that towel didn't match Nevaeh's DNA. And Jennifer, she even came to George Kennedy's defense, saying that she knew of his prior conviction, that he deserved a second chance. She also said that she would never have left her child alone with this guy. But she then went on to the airways and said that in her mind she holds George responsible. I think they have answers. I can't f tell you for sure if they had anything to do with it. But Nevaeh's family, they think that her mother Jennifer knows more than she's saying. And this is probably because she failed part of her polygraph test. I hope that it wasn't her. I hope she was not involved. But my gut tells me if she wasn't, you know, immediately involved, she knows something. I'm sick. I don't, I don't want to believe that she has something to do with it. But, I mean, if she did, she deserves what she gets. She needs to spend time in jail. And... This would never have happened if she was in my custody a long time ago. Police have never said if Nevaeh was sexually assaulted, but since they eventually dropped George Kennedy and Roy Lee Smith as suspects, we're going to assume that she wasn't sexually assaulted. And after dropping them as suspects, the case has gone pretty cold. But the community and her family, they haven't forgotten about her. They continue to show their support. They set up marches, drives, donations. And they really just try everything that they can to spread awareness. It wouldn't be until 2014 when police would finally announce an update in the case. They had a new suspect. This new suspect's name is... Well, we don't know because they haven't told us what his name is. According to the Monroe County News, the suspect is in his mid-30s, born and raised in the area, and had a troubled childhood and he's currently serving time in prison for domestic violence. And police, they've supposedly questioned him at length, but he's refused to confess. And right now, that's the strongest suspect that they've got. They do have some other leads, however. Two separate vans, a green van and a red van, were seen near Hollywood Elementary School. There's also something about an ice cream truck and a 64-year-old man who was at the apartment complex and was later seen burning stuff but nothing ever came of these leads. Nevaeh's family, they think that she had to have known her killer for her to go with them because nobody heard any screams or anything like that. Personally, I might have to agree with them. When I first heard about this case, it pissed me off so much. The fact that somebody took her from her family and took her life from her just really breaks my heart. You know, it it's tragic. It's awful, really. It's just awful. There haven't been any updates in the case since 2014, so I'm hoping with this video we could get some information out. 
uh, maybe generate some new curiosity in this case. I would really, really love to see justice brought to Nevaeh and her family and see this killer stuck behind bars for the rest of his life. Playground has since been dedicated in her honor, and a picture of Nevaeh hangs in the hallway at her former elementary school. And there's a bench on the playground of her school with her picture on it. Something that I noticed about Nevaeh's name is it's heaven spelled backwards, and I thought that that was interesting. I thought it was kind of cool. I'm really curious to hear what you think about this case. I really don't know what to think about it. Um, surface level the all of the articles that i found they really don't shed any sort of doubt on her mom you know like i said it's tragic it's sad she was buried alive uh nobody deserves that i couldn't even imagine the pain the fear the terror you know it's so hard to do a happy outro after talking about all of this thank you for tuning into this episode of mysterious minds if you liked the video then please like the video and if you appreciated my effort then please consider subscribing it would really help me out if you have a mystery, a missing person, anything like that, and you want information out about that case, please leave the suggestion down in the comments, and I will try my best to get to it. But that's all I've got for now. So until next Sunday, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.